what is frequency compensation? So introduction, and then I will discuss phantom zero compensation. In the book, you find much more. You find pulse splitting techniques. That was basically the question of one of you on the chat. Do we do all these other techniques as well? No, pulse splitting, pulse zero canceling, resistive broadbanding, and phase margin design is all not discussed, but it is discussed in the book. But the most important technique, phantom zero compensation, will be the main topic for today. So also bandwidth reduction and nested control is all in the book. There's 60 pages about frequency compensation, but that would be too much for this bachelor course. We do the most important. And of course, because this is structured design, we want to know if we do phantom zero compensation, what is the interaction with other performance aspects? I mean, what happens with the linearity? What happens with the noise? if we do frequency compensation as such. So what is frequency compensation? That's the first question that we want to know. Well, frequency compensation is the application of techniques to correct the frequency response of an amplifier. And what techniques? Well, today, only one technique, the phantom zero compensation technique. So, and of course, with structure design, without unintentionally degrading performance aspect that has been designed earlier. So if we designed already the noise performance of the amplifier, then we want after compensation, the noise performance not to be degraded. And if we designed already the bandwidth of the amplifier, we don't want to do compensation and reducing the bandwidth, unless of course, that is a goal that we want, but in many situations you design the bandwidth then your amplifier turns to be unstable or doesn't have the response that you want. And then you, then you want to apply frequency compensation techniques. So the design approach is that we will do independent correction of low pass and high pass frequency uh, behavior. And that I will explain in a picture. Let's say we have studied that this is a low pass behavior that the product of the loop gain and the pulse, and we call this mid-band loop gain because we are not interested in what happens at the lower side, and maybe there are zeros in the loop gain drops again. So the product of something that we call the mid-band loop gain and all the dominant poles are setting the cutoff frequency. That was in the previous lecture. And the frequency response is that in this region, we want to have maybe a nice, flat, mag, mag, maximally flat magnitude response. At the low side, there can be something because of coupling capacitors, because of zeros in the origin, because of zeros anyway, that we have such a, a, a behavior. We have seen this with the integrator example. And in that case, maybe we also have peaking or undesired instability at low frequencies. And then this needs to be corrected as well, and maybe also a maximally flat magnitude response. So the curve, the real curve, gluing against this asymptotes, sticking to it. And um, we do this design independent from this design. In bandpass filters, they, this is not a bandpass filter, this is a wideband approach. So we can say that the poles here don't have to do anything with the poles here, but in bandpass fil filters it will be. So we are not going to do filter design. So let's see how it works. We have the gain from source to load. It can be written as the product of the ideal gain. Then something here in the midband, a midband accuracy. If the loop gain in the midband goes to infinity, then this equals unity. And then we have a good accuracy, very small inaccuracy. One over the midband loop gain is about the inaccuracy. Then we have high pass cutoff that can be written in this way. A number of zeros in the origin and an equivalent, uh, equal number of poles and having such a polynomial. And then we have low pass cutoff 
and we have unity. This is unity gain, and this is unity gain. Here, for s goes to infinity, you see we have we have one. So s goes to infinity, we have this. And here, for s goes to zero, we have one here. This line. So ideal gain, mid band accuracy, high pass cut off, and low pass cut off. The techniques that we uh, have is insertion of phantom zeros. I will explain, of course, later what it is. Pole splitting by increasing interaction between poles. Pole splitting through pole zero canceling. Resisted broadbanding by exchanging a pole frequency with midband loop gain. And this is what we will not do, number two, three, and four. We will only discuss in this lecture insertion of phantom zeros. The strategy. We want to maintain the bandwidth designed at an earlier stage. That's what I said before. <coughs> I want to, um, if we design the bandwidth or we selected an operational amplifier such that the loop gain pulse product of our amplifier is adequate, then we have enough bandwidth. Then after compensation, we don't want to look for another operational amplifier because we killed all the bandwidth. So we want to maintain the bandwidth that is designed at an earlier stage. This in the case that the obtained bandwidth is adequate and there is no margin to reduce it. Of course, it can be that you select an operational amplifier um, for other reasons, uh, maybe low noise, and you get too much, you get more bandwidth than you really need. So then we can exchange bandwidth of the ideal transfer with that of a servo function. Maybe I will give a demonstration of this effect, but um, it is not really part of this course. It's just only to elucidate it. So the obtained bandwidth is much more than required. In, this ca in that case, we can do something. We can reduce the bandwidth of the ideal gain. We can also reduce the bandwidth of the loop gain. Also, in the case that the bandwidth is more than required and the number of dominant poles is too large to deal with. For example, this happens in power amplifiers. If you have many, many amplifier stages, um, uh, they all bring in their own poles. You have many poles, and if you need many stages because you need a high available power gain of your amplifier, then you end up with a lot of poles. And maybe with a lot of poles, you cannot handle the design anymore. You cannot maintain stability. And then maybe you just want to reduce the bandwidth because in because um, accuracy or uh, drive capability or linearity was requiring so many stages and not your bandwidth. So we will focus only on number one. 